Republicans' plan to bring an impeachment against President Biden appears to have gotten off to a rocky start. In the first impeachment inquiry hearing yesterday, the GOP witnesses undercut allegations that the president was a recipient of bribes in connection to his son Hunter Biden's business deals. And one senior aide in the House called it a, quote, unmitigated disaster per CNN's reporter, Melanie Zanona. Here's Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez questioning the GOP witnesses. Let's watch. Mr. Turley, I have a simple question for you. In your testimony today, are you presenting any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by the President of the United States? No, I'm not. No, you are not. Ms. O'Connor. You are the second uh, Republican witness here today. Have you, in your testimony, presented any firsthand witness account of crimes committed by, pre by the President of the United States? I have not. Their third witness also said he had no evidence. Chairman Comer also appeared to get in a shouting match with a Democratic member on the panel, Daniel Goldman. Take a look. Chair recognizes Mr. Donald for five minutes. Order, You'll have five minutes. You will have my five all minutes. Point of no, order. you're out of order. Five you're five out of order, Mr. Goldman. I have a when your when your time is, you I will be to recognized. Introduce Chair something recognizes by Mr. Mr. Donalds for five minutes. Is it being introduced? Chair recognizes Mr. Donalds for five minutes. Byron, it's Mr. your Chairman, time. The rules require you Thank to you, recognize. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No. Yes, for a point of order, they absolutely do. Chair recognizes Mr. Donalds. Meanwhile, Republican Congresswoman from South Carolina, Nancy Mace, did not hold back with her allotted time. Let's watch. We already know the president took bribes from Burisma. I also want to add, betraying your country is treason. All right, heavy charge there, Jessica. And I have to say, I don't think that the impeachment inquiry hearing was as bad as the media made it out to be. They all were kind of replaying this AOC clip ad nauseum. And I don't think there was ever any suggestion that Jonathan Turley, who's a constitutional law scholar, was going to arrive in there with direct evidence of Hunter Biden and Joe Biden's corruption. I think he was trying to help them put the pieces together. But when you watch some of the other clips from the hearing where they really laid out the evidence in full, I thought that they did a good job. And this is the first hearing in the impeachment inquiry. I don't think anyone's expecting at this point, or they shouldn't be expecting at this point, that the investigation is concluded and they have the smoking gun yet. The whole point of launching the inquiry in the first place was to have a series of hearings where they could bring in witnesses and hopefully garner some additional testimony, some additional evidence. But just off the top of my head, um, they found this new bank payment that was made from the Chinese energy company to Hunter Biden. The beneficiary address was listed as Joe Biden's Delaware home, even though Hunter was not living there at the time. He had recently moved to California with his new wife. They laid out the actual web chart of the offshore companies and, and businesses that the money was flown through to the Biden family members. They had some new text messages where Hunter Biden was talking with family members about um, how this was all done to protect Joe and how Joe was gleaming some of his, or not gleaming, gleaming some of his money. Um, so I think there was evidence presented. It was just that the mainstream media wasn't interested in taking those parts of the hearing and broadcasting them because it would make Biden look bad. I think this was, it was a lot of circumstantial evidence, which doesn't feel like a break from everything we've already seen. When you have James Comer saying that a mountain of evidence will be uncovered, I would assume that means this is evidence that they already have. Then you have Comer saying, well, we're going to subpoena the bank statements from Hunter and Joe Biden and see if we can find that payment from Burisma to Joe and to Hunter. And it seems to me that that's not there. He's still claiming that there are things getting in the way of the investigation. So there are things getting in the way of them acquiring the evidence. At this point, I want evidence of what's getting in the way of them obtaining the evidence because now they have this inquiry open and it wasn't the mountain of evidence with the smoking gun that they made it seem like it would be. And so I'm not sure what's going to come out of this impeachment inquiry. I would like to see evidence from James Comer of what's getting in the way of the investigation, what evidence.
evidence do you think is there and what is blocking you from obtaining it? I think that's really what we we need to see. Six hours of a hearing, three witnesses that that don't have any firsthand account of Joe Biden committing any misdemeanors or crimes. I really think if the Republicans want to be taken seriously on this impeachment inquiry, they're going to need to present some more solid evidence than the circumstantial and speculative or speculative evidence that they've presented here. Yeah, I mean, it's still early, like I said, but they did release a 30 page or so memo yesterday in concurrence with the hearing where they did lay out the evidence that they have thus far. And while it is circumstantial, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to put the threads together and realize that the payments that were being remitted to the Biden family were in exchange for no real services. Um, Hunter Biden at one point received one hundred forty two thousand dollars from a Kazakhstani oligarch and then bought a sports car the next day. I mean, what work realistically was Hunter Biden doing for some guy in Kazakhstan? And then one of the other stories that's not talked about much, but I think is really good evidence of the corruption scheme, the pay for play, is in 2014, Hunter Biden has it, had his investment firm, uh, Rosemont Seneca Thornton. He got $3.5 million from a Russian oligarch named Elena Baterina. And around that time was when Joe Biden showed up for dinner with Baterina, um, and uh, and Hunter Biden and Devin Archer, at uh, they had dinner at Cafe Milano. The lawmaker said there's no evidence that Hunter Biden provided any actual services to Batterina. And meanwhile, she was omitted from a round of U.S. sanctions that were put on uh, Russian oligarchs in the aftermath of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, so for me, that that's pretty good evidence. I mean, you can't obviously directly tie uh, you know, an email or a text message where Joe Biden says, I'm not going to sanction Batterina because of the millions of dollars she gave my son. But the connection is implied. Yeah, I think they're going to need something stronger than an implied connection and circumstantial evidence if they plan on moving forward with this impeachment. Of course, the inquiry is the place where they're supposed to present evidence. I would just expect more in the first day where it's a six hour hearing. Uh, I think it, it's an interesting thing what Nancy Mace said there about treason, because so often you have members of Congress today and members of the United States government that are involved with multinational corporations, whether it's that they have money invested in stock and influence policy in the direction of them making as much money as possible off of their stock. We, we saw this happen a ton during the COVID-19 pandemic when they had information that the general public did not have about how severe the pandemic would be. We saw members of Congress move their investments around so that they could make as much money as possible and wouldn't be financially hurt by the dip in the stock market that we saw as a result of the pandemic. We see members serving in Congress who have, you know, relatives, their partner directly serving on the board of huge companies. And so if we want to call it treason to betray your country in, in this kind of a circumstance where you're accepting money from corporations and profiting off of your public office, then so many members of Congress would lose their seat because they're committing treason. And so I would really like to see that kind of energy applied even handedly, not just when there's someone in office that we don't like or don't agree with. Sure, that's fine. I mean, I'm against corruption across the board. I do think that this situation is a bit escalated because of the fact that Vice President Joe Biden at the time of these payments was in fact in charge of policy related to our uh, geopolitical enemies. I mean, particularly with China, Hunter Biden was receiving money from the Chinese energy company when Vice President Joe Biden went over to try to negotiate um, with Xi Jinping on matters related to the South China Sea and uh, China's demarcation of the South China Sea. He had a long diplomatic meeting with Xi Jinping, didn't accomplish anything. Xi Jinping basically told him to go kick rocks. We're not doing anything differently, thanks to your meeting. And Joe Biden turns around. He goes to meet with Hunter Biden's business partner on the Chinese energy company, which we know Chinese businesses are necessarily loyal to the CCP. And then when he gets home back to the United States, he writes a nice glowing letter of recommendation so that the Chinese businessman's son can get into an elite university. Um, I feel like that's that's heads and tails um, closer to treason than 
these stock trades, which I agree are bad. Um, but the, the, the situation where you're actually influencing foreign policy in a way that allows our geopolitical enemies to gain more power and territory in exchange for your son getting a few million dollars is despicable. And again, this is early in the impeachment inquiry process. I know we're going to see more as we move along um, throughout the process. But there's so much already, um, even when you have Joe Biden on tape talking about firing that prosecutor who was looking into Burisma, Trump was impeached for far less. He was impeached for a phone call where he asked Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden's corruption in exchange for foreign aid, allegedly. But then when Joe Biden is literally on videotape suggesting the same exact thing, if not worse, enriching his son in exchange for getting rid of an investigation into the company that his son is working for. And he talks about threatening to withhold $100 million in U.S. aid in exchange for that. I just want the same standard to be applied to Biden as it was to Trump, because, again, he was impeached for far, far less. In the case of Joe Biden, I think it's a, a different circumstance when he's trying to make his family wealthier through his ties with foreign corporations, multinational corporations. This is something members of the highest office in the United States have done for ages. And if they really cared about this, I think our members of Congress would be focusing on making legislation to prevent those kinds of deals from happening, to make your family wealthier based on your connections to foreign agencies, to foreign governments. That is something different than asking for aid from a foreign country to influence the outcome of a democratic election in the United States. I think those two things are extraordinarily different. One, you're influencing the politics and the democratic state of our nation. The other, you're obtaining wealth. Both are wrong, but entirely different kinds of crimes, different kinds of collusion with foreign governments. And I think that's why Trump's impeachment was incredibly straightforward and bipartisan. Whereas you have this investigation into Joe Biden, we don't even have concrete evidence that it happened. In the Trump case, we did. But in this case, we don't have the concrete evidence. We don't have the smoking gun. The evidence is circumstantial. And it's different in nature to enrich your family than to overturn an election. Was, but was Trump overturning an election or was he looking into the exact same corruption that we're talking about now? And on your point about, you know, introducing legislation that prevents this type of enriching yourself from corporations, there is a Republican uh, Congressman Zach Nunn, who actually did introduce that legislation earlier this week. So I hope that Democrats will partner with him on that. I think that would go a long way towards having a equally applicable standard to everybody in Congress. But I don't think that means that the Republicans are wrong to also ask for accountability from Joe Biden. We're going to have to leave it there. We'll be back with Real more com. rising after this.